Hello again. A few months ago, I posted a video about how to use various spice blends from Trader Joe's. It's time for an update. Trader Joe's has actually come out with some new spice blends, so we should talk about them. Today, we're going to be talking about the new Everything But the Elote Seasoning Blend. You know, I'm here to just kind of review it, let you know what does it taste like? Where can you use it in your kitchen? If you're like me, if you see it at Trader Joe's, you're probably just going to buy it anyway because it's so tempting and everything there usually tastes good, but then you're going to end up with something on your shelf and you don't know what to use with it. So I'm here to walk you through it. I'm here to tell you what works and what doesn't, and we will figure this out together. Okay, so let's get into it. This is called the Everything But the Elote. Uh, and the front describes salt, chili pepper, cheese, chipotle, and cumin. So it sounds like this savory, kind of maybe spicy blend. Uh, I tried to look online to see what other people were using this on, and most people kind of said they're putting it on corn, which makes sense. Elote is like this Mexican street corn. I've never been to Mexico, so if any of this is inaccurate or I'm mispronouncing anything, you know, rip me to shreds, but I'm just doing my best here. The elote street corn, this is supposed to like replicate that flavor. So people are understandably putting it on corn and saying that it tastes really good. In fact, the label says to sprinkle, sprinkle this container and a basic corn cob turns into incredible. A roasted corn cob, a little butter, a little mayo, sprinkle, sprinkle, elote. It's also great on other vegetables or meat, which is kind of vague. Uh, a sprinkle here, a sprinkle there, just sprinkle, sprinkle everywhere. So it's just like, it's like you can put it on corn or like other stuff, I guess. Uh, that seems kind of vague to me. When we look into the ingredients, the number one ingredient is actually sugar, which is surprising because I was expecting something kind of salty and savory. Number two is sea salt. Okay, then corn flour. So that's where the corn flavoring comes from. Chili pepper, then Parmesan cheese, which is going to give it that very savory umami flavor. Also makes it notably not vegan. So if you're vegan, then please avoid. Then we have chipotle powder natural flavor, citric acid, dried cilantro, rice fiber, and cumin powder. Nutrition facts is pretty much that there's some salt in it, otherwise not a lot of calories or other macronutrients to be found. So my first thought is if the number one ingredient is sugar and then salt and then corn, like I don't really understand why people are just putting this on corn. Um, at least just from reading the label and trying to get a gist of like what is in this. Like a roasted corn on the cob naturally tastes like corn. And then if you roast it, it's going to caramelize and get sweet flavors. I'm normally going to salt it anyway. So part of me is just like, well, why would I put salt and sugar and corn powder onto corn? It already tastes like all of those things. So I was going to try to see like what other applications this would be good for and more unique ways you could use this kind of like corn spice on things other than corn. But uh, yeah, I was just kind of curious. So let me show you what I tried. First things first, made it to the Trader Joe's spice area where they're unfortunately all out of the other seasoning that I was going to feature. This might show up in a future video, but right now we just had the Elote spice blend. Fortunately, that was one of the kind of featured items that I got to sample while I was in the store. So I got to try it on the sweet potato fries before I even brought it home. And I was happy that the fries tasted good because I had planned on putting it on this sweet potato hash I had left over in the fridge. Here I'm just reheating some sweet potatoes and some asparagus and like in the store it just tasted very good on the sweet potatoes. You can see here that I ate it all up. Next I wanted to try it on another kind of Mexican flavor which was on some avocado. So I decided why not let's put it on some avocado toast. All right here we go. It tastes corny. It tastes really good. I'm gonna put more on it. It's actually really good. Then with the success of the sweet potatoes and the avocado, I got a little too brave. I put it on some grapefruit thinking, okay, there's a bunch of sugar in it. I have leftover grapefruit. Let's give this a try. All right, a little more experimental, but let's try the elote grapefruit. We'll see how it goes. Okay. This was actually not okay. The spiciness, savoriness of the seasoning competed way too much with the bitter grapefruit. It did not taste good. I was kidding myself. Uh, so that was humbling. I decided to go back to something that I thought was a safer bet and make some hash browns. Hash browns and like elote seasoning I thought might be 
kind of like a corn fritter, which is delicious. So that was my next experiment. All right, so I'm going to try a hash brown covered in the everything but the elote seasoning. Let's give it a go. That was very good. It's very similar to the sweet potato fries I tried in the store. This makes me happy for two reasons. One, I've never made hash browns successfully before. So I'm really excited about that. And then two is the elote blend tastes really good on them. So highly recommend. The last thing I tried was some popcorn. I know I said that I didn't want to put it just on corn, uh, but I eat a lot of popcorn and I thought it'd be good. I didn't buy the prepackaged corn because I wanted to see how this seasoning stood on its own. So I just kind of shook it all up together. So this one is pretty heavily seasoned. I'm going to give it a go. Yeah, that's delicious. It's like smoky. It's not really like spicy, but you can taste that there's chili in it. It's salty. This is also approved. In summary, this blend was really good on various kinds of starches and grains. Uh, like the label says, like the internet suggests, go ahead and put it on corn. I put it on popcorn, it tastes good. I'm sure it would make a can of corn taste good or corn on the cob. Uh, I also tried to add it on various potato products and it really kind of jazzed them up. Also brought some new life to my avocado toast. So that makes my little millennial heart sing. Don't be stupid like me and put it on grapefruit. Uh, just think that one through a little bit. It will taste bad. I was thinking that the sugar in it was going to make it taste sweet. But really there's spices in there and there's kind of smoky flavors and savoriness. There's cheese in it. Like just don't put it on grapefruit. Don't be dumb. Another thing that I didn't even try was I did not apply any heat to this because the number one ingredient is sugar. I was worried about burning it. Sugar tends to burn. So don't put it on things that are about to go on the grill or about to go on your stovetop at a high heat. Wait for those things to come off and then like finish it with it. I think it'll still be able to add a good flavor without uh, burning and getting bitter and gross. So with all that being said, thank you so much for watching. If you have any other suggestions or ways that you think you could use it, please leave them in the comments below. If you like content like this, feel free to like the video and subscribe to my channel. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you next time.